I love gardening, and now's the time of year when I'm spending more and more time out in the garden. But you know, for all of my garden areas, I don't spend very much time in any one particular spot. In fact, sometimes two weeks can go by and I haven't actually looked at a garden, but I've set things up so that I didn't need to. It takes very little maintenance when I do come around to it again. And that's really the theme of this video today. I want to talk about how to set up an extremely low maintenance garden so low maintenance, it may be appropriate for areas that may not typically have so much garden happening in them. And one place in particular is healthcare facilities. Now this is inspired by a local group called PEACH Ontario, which stands for Partnerships in Environmental Action by Clinicians and Communities for Healthcare Facilities, which includes hospitals, clinics, that sort of thing. And those types of establishments tend to have a little extra green space around them. So with one or more interested people and the permission to do it, I think those green spaces could quite easily be converted into a garden area, possibly have a space for compost. I have a video on that too. I don't know if you know this, but in Canada, the healthcare sector is responsible for 4.6% of Canada's annual greenhouse gas emissions. And that's from everything, from the building energy to the things that are really hard to quantify, like what goes into manufacturing and making a drug, and then what goes into the drug being administered, and all the steps in between as well. So it's a big footprint to mitigate, and this is one of the ways that we can just a little bit, because a garden will be a carbon sink as well. Gardens are great for mental health, for a sense of community, and you can even make them productive so that they're helpful for pollinators or for us, they can give us food. So to set up a low maintenance garden that can be cared for by one person or a group of interested people on a rotation, you only need three things. You need a good location, you need to have a barrier somehow from whatever is surrounding, and you need to use woody mulch. The location is probably the most important thing. Ideally, it's in a highly visible area that's close to a water source so that it's easy to keep in mind and easy to look after. Additionally, most plants are going to want to have some sunshine. A way to find out if a place looks like it's going to be good for your purposes is to keep an eye on it over several weeks. Look throughout the day at any shadow patterns. If you can, notice if it gets overly soggy after a rain or if it dries out faster than other areas. Is it a place of high winds? All of these things can inform where is the best spot to put a garden. But if you can water it, see it, and the plants can see the sun, the rest is kind of just enhancing your location rather than truly necessary. The next thing I think is that a garden is much easier to maintain and much less frustrating if there's a very clear dividing line between what is your garden and what is the rest of nature around. The reason that makes a garden more low maintenance is it reduces weeding pressure or recreating the boundary. If you create a boundary very clearly once, then you don't have to keep reestablishing it. Now I have several gardens on my property where I wasn't very firm with my boundary the first time and I have to keep waging war with nature or else my gardens start to shrink. And then the third thing I think is woody mulch. Really what you're going for is some sort of a soil protector to go around your plants. There are other kinds of mulch that you can use, but I'm saying woody mulch because it's the lowest maintenance. You just brush it aside when you want to plant and then you never have to do anything else. You don't have to remove it at the end of the season. You just let it naturally decompose and it takes a while. So you have some time before that happens. Every one to two years, it's good to top it up a bit, but that's it. And even though it's a grass and not a wood, I think of a couple of inches of straw as being wood E as well. It's the same principle. You never have to take it away. You just replace it every one to two years as it decomposes into the soil naturally. 
and it's the lowest maintenance. Wood chips, lots of straw, either of those are really good woody mulches. The plants go in the soil and the mulch goes over top and around the plants. What this does is it helps to keep your plants that you want, their roots nice and cool. It helps to keep the soil nice and moist so it doesn't form a hard crust that's really difficult for your plants to thrive in. And it decreases the amount of weeds that you have because many weeds will not be able to plant themselves in the mulch. And the ones that do weasel their way down actually are really easy to just pull out. You're not pulling out of a hard compacted clay area, you're pulling out of loose mulch and nice loose fertile soil. Let me show you some examples. This garden is in an area that gets lots of light. It is well uh, separated from the lawn down below. It's covered with great woody mulch and in it I have potatoes growing. And honest to goodness, I have not touched this garden since I planted the potatoes. I don't see a weed in sight. I do see my little tiny marigold that I also planted, which is over here. But besides the potatoes, that's the only other thing growing. Oh, I lied. Here's one. There. One weed. And it has been well, since these weren't sprouting, which I believe is about three weeks since I came and looked at this specific garden. So super low maintenance. It probably took about an afternoon to set up when you consider filling it as well as putting the pieces together. This is a lovely box that my husband made for me out of cedar. I just have a little bit of kale growing in it right now, but hopefully it will take over as the season continues. I have almost no weeding to do out of this one ever. It's well far away from stray weed seeds and things like that. Again, really close to water and has some good sunlight too. Here's where I am waging a bit of a turf war with the lawn. You can see that there's a mix of where the lawn's trying to take over my mulch and I keep trying to pull it back. Wasted effort you don't need to do if you set it up properly. So this garden bed is brand new and this one I put in last year. Now this is probably the easiest or the fastest garden bed I've put together. And just to tell you how quick it was, it took my husband dropping the soil, so however long that took, which wasn't terrible, then I came and put these bricks in and added the mulch and then these posts. And it took me about two hours, maybe three. Um, it was a morning anyway, last year when I was six months pregnant. So if I could do that by myself, then I think a very simple garden for a group of even two or three people is very attainable. And it's been a great little garden as well. Other than I wish I had taken the time to put some edging down because this is another example of one of my gardens where I don't have a great barrier between lawn and garden. And I do spend some time pulling the grass out of the mulch as it tries to creep in. This one took me a little bit longer, but all it is is I marked out a square solarized the grass underneath and laid down these bricks and then it's filled with soil and with mulch. And I wasn't too precious about leveling or that sort of thing either. Um, it's not really stuck together, so it's pretty easy to repair it if it needs it later, but I think it actually won't. It's, you know, pretty sturdy. I can walk on it, no problem, woohoo. And in here, I'm gonna grow some tomatoes and this fun copper trellis is gonna have strings down for them to grow up. Here's an example of a low maintenance communal garden near where I live. This is outside of my local library. And you can see that this garden obeys those three tips I told you about. The gardens are in a great location, close to water, lots of sunshine, highly visible. There's a clear barrier of height here between the grass beneath and what they want to grow. And they're using nice woody mulch to suppress weeds and protect the soil. So once you've set up your garden, what should you plant in it? 
sky's the limit, but some good low maintenance things can be perennials. Hostas are extremely hardy. If you have deer around, you might want to have some sort of deer protection because they love to eat it and you can eat them too if you want to. For food crops, I find things like sweet potatoes are extremely low maintenance. Potatoes are to some extent as well, not quite as low maintenance as sweet potatoes. Really any of the root crops tend to be pretty easy to maintain and the leaves can be added to salads. And then pollinators really love a variety of flowers and they can be really quite beautiful as well. I love the look of nasturtiums, cosmos, alyssum, marigolds, all of that mixed together in a garden bed. And they often will self-seed, so you may not even have to plant them again the next year if you like that kind of a look. Once your garden is set up and ready to go for the growing season, I suggest you decide who is going to look after it. Ideally, this would be a rotation of people, although it could be one person. And what your garden really needs is two minutes at a time, at most twice a day, but that's really if you've got a long list of people who want to come out and see it. Ideal is probably about once a day, but you can certainly get away with once a week or even less. I do in my garden all the time and things don't get too out of hand with that kind of a time frame. In those two minutes, you're going to pick a two minute task. And that task is either going to be watering, weeding, maintaining the plants or enjoying. And I want to add enjoying because it is a really important part of this. It's why we do it to protect the planet because we love nature and because we want the planet to be able to heal itself. So first, watering. You check if the soil needs water by using your finger. The mulch on top may well feel very dry as this mulch today does feel. But if I take my finger and I bury up to the second knuckle underneath the mulch, like this, I can feel that it's actually quite wet underneath, wet and cool, which is exactly what these radishes love. So that's fantastic, I don't need to water today. So then my next task would be weeding. So I'm going to look in the spaces where there are not things that I've planted growing. And I see one right here, just one little one. So watch how long this takes, I pull it out, and I just leave it on top of the mulch there. I don't need any extra equipment because it will naturally decompose and just add to the soil of the garden. If you don't need to water, you don't need to weed, then spend your two minutes looking at the plants and maybe thinning carrots if you have too many that are crowded or like pulling off spent blooms so that the plant will create more flowers for you. And if the garden doesn't look like it really needs your attention in any of those areas, then spend two minutes just enjoying, looking at any little insects that might be buzzing around, noticing if there's a smell to things, maybe harvesting if there's something to harvest, cutting some flowers, bringing them into the office if that's allowed where you are. If you feel like you need some specific instructions on how to grow something, YouTube can be a great resource and so is your local library. In my experience, they have a wonderful gardening section. If you have something similar to what I'm describing already set up, I would really love to see it. If you've got extra notes or inspiration, please add it to my social media, add it to Peach Ontario's social media. Links are in the description below. And however your garden grows, keep growing as a gardener.